They say lightning never strikes the same place twice, but is that true in the watch world? My previous look at main watches already felt like a bit of a freak occurrence. I mean, a well-designed, high-quality watch from an ex-Kickstarter brand that isn't out to scam you? What? It's no wonder I gave that Hudson Mark III such praise. Now they're hoping to double up on their success with the Greenwich GMT, which is based on the Hudson, but with some clear modifications. The newer model also comes in with a higher price tag of around £540, making it around 140 more expensive than its predecessor. As a big fan of the Hudson, does this new Greenwich do enough to justify that increased cost? Let's find out together. Gone is the compact, modular packaging of the Hudson. This time, the Greenwich arrived in a longer box, which I'm indifferent to. At the end of the day, it's a box. Upon first impressions, this one really does look like a Hudson, but with the bezel removed and the styling cranked up to 11. I opted for this colorway because number one, I'm boring, and number two, it allows for a fairer comparison to the older model. There are a few more experimental alternatives, including this red model, which I was oddly very tempted by. Size-wise, it's much the same, with an identical 38mm diameter and a similar thickness and look-to-look -look at 127 and 46mm respectively. When blindfolded, outside of the rotating bezel, I won't be able to tell any difference on wrist. <gasps> like its forebearer, it's comfy and is well-suited to small and average wrist sizes, though it will look rather small on big arms. While indistinguishable on the surface, the steel case does feature some alterations and improvements. Firstly, it houses drilled lugs, allowing for more convenient scrap Scrap changes? <laughs> Is it scrap metal this watch? Stay tuned to find out. Firstly, it houses drilled lugs, allowing for more convenient strap changes, a practical improvement that will reduce the chances of you scratching the watch during this process. Obviously, it does somewhat mar the fluidity of those polished flanks, which have otherwise been executed as well as the Hudson. That model was already well finished and this is no exception, with delicate brushing that's done perhaps a tad better and super high polishing atop the stepped bezel. Personally, I think this is the correct choice. It allows this model to hold a unique place in Main's minimal lineup, which predominantly includes regular rotating bezel models. The upper ring catches the light beautifully, and despite being a fingerprint magnet, it immediately elevates the aesthetic of the Greenwich and helps it look like an even more expensive piece. Marrying that nicely is the sapphire crystal, with its striking blue AR coating that provides a streak of colour during rotation and incredible clarity, allowing for easy visuals of the dial beneath. Indeed, legibility is what the Greenwich does best, with this double-domed crystal exhibiting no warping at steeper angles either, and the oversized indices permitting easy reading in a pinch. When side by side with the Hudson, this really is night and day. The newer model offers a noticeably punchier, higher contrast experience, even with the same general color scheme. This can partially be attributed to the enamel dial, which manages to offer a subtle sheen, despite harboring a really dark tone. They also offer a waffle dial variant, which looks all right, though my friend AB from Watch Collecting Strategy says that the level of printing does suffer in order to accommodate this added texture. Here, however, the inking has been completed to an excellent standard with no obvious flaws, and the thick embossed markers are better aligned than the slim applied pieces on the Hudson, as you would perhaps expect. While the printed logo is certainly minimalist, for a watch at this price, you'd perhaps expect an applied alternative to complete the package. I don't doubt Main's ability to execute this, though. I know they're still experimenting with this element as some of their newer models appear to have an icon that has ditched the italicized E present on this one. Perhaps this printed version is the preferred choice for clarity's sake. I don't mind either way, as it's far from the most divisive I've come across, being presented in a pleasing serif font that matches well with the sans serif wording in the bottom half of the dial. Their signature skyscraper hands make a return here, with the luminescence inhabiting larger portions of the surface area, echoing the approach taken with the hour markers. Perhaps at an ultra macro level, they showcase some imperfections, but even through a watchmaker's loop, they appear silky smooth and cleaner than their brethren on the Hudson. As you might expect, this watch is extremely easy to read in low light due to the huge markers, though the duration of this upgraded X1 grade stuff is still a bit underwhelming. It's usable, but remains an area for improvement. Unlike most popular GMT watches, the absence of the bezel necessitates the repositioning of the 24-hour scale to the outer edge of the chapter ring. Of course, this isn't the most user-friendly, but it slots in nicely without diminishing the carefully crafted aesthetic. The same can be said about the diminutive white date window, which seamlessly takes the place of the three o'clock marker, disguised in plain sight. Thankfully, it's not butted up awkwardly to the adjacent slimmed down index, and instead secures the symmetry of the piece by precisely mirroring the inner alignment of its opposite number. This right here is what thoughtful design looks like. 
This variant of the Greenwich is known as the Orange, alluding to the accent on the GMT text and hand tip which aid visibility and help prevent the watch from looking stale. Powering these functions is the Swisstech S24-045 automatic movement, one of many ETA2824 clones that is supposedly regulated in-house by Mayen. The time grapher gave out an accuracy of plus 10 seconds a day during recording, though the Greenwich was gaining around 16 seconds a day previously, so perhaps their system does need some refinement as this would place it out of spec, that being plus minus 12 seconds a day. A beat rate of 28,800 beats per hour yields a second hand motion that elegantly glides around the watch face, which helps aid the air of sophistication that surrounds this GMT, though the aforementioned inaccuracy is still frustrating. The movement is sealed in with a screwed case rear, as well as a fully threaded crown which combined to secure the watch to a 10 ATM water resistance rating. While this isn't as high as the similarly designed Hudson, it is still past the point of worry and should serve you handily in aquatic conditions. There's no sort of branded engraving on the back with the more generic edition text occupying that area. Whether this is the standard implementation or limited to reviewer samples, I'm not sure, though something a little more custom would have been optimal. The crown engraving has at least been improved, with a more defined M that actually sits centrally this time, which is nice to see. The Greenwich comes fitted on one of two types of rubber strap, including the Black Tropic that I received. Overall, this is high quality and durable, with a look that suits the watch well, though I have a couple of minor gripes that I think are worth sharing. Firstly, the gaps between the usable central holes are quite large, meaning that fine adjustments aren't possible. Secondly, the ends with the spring bars sit so snugly to the case that they rub against it, with an awkward jerk as you rotate it. It doesn't particularly affect how the watch wears, but could cause unnecessary erosion in the long term. As such, I'd consider the impressive looking integrated rubber strap instead, which appears to alleviate at least one of these issues. When next to the Hudson, this GMT certainly looks like a more expensive watch, despite not technically being a much higher quality one. Maybe that's the name of the game when you reach this price though. As I've said before, you get diminishing returns in terms of build quality past a certain mark, where the finer details and marketing take the mantle from just pure specifications. Part of me thinks that this is one of the crucial differences between this GMT and the likes of your high quality San Martin AliExpress specials that sit at around half the retail price. This Mayan dial comfortably blows away those in terms of polish and artisanship despite the case construction and finishing being of a comparable level. Main watches also have a consistent design language, as well as a far clearer brand identity that raises it into a different league. The Swiss made label on top of that is a bonus. If you're after pure specs, there are other routes to go down. But for those after a classy, unique and versatile design, the Greenwich is a noteworthy successor to the Hudson, despite the price jump. Sometimes though, these crowdfunded brands don't turn out so great. In the video on screen, you'll see what happened when I tried to review a brand that pulled every devious trick in the book. Get yourself clued up so that you don't get hoaxed.